similar to intelligent document analysis, recommender systems have a lot of applications. And let's start with the ideas that we already learned about. Let's transform the task of recommendation to a task that is similar to processing text. And then you can use your familiar architectures like recurrent neural networks. For some websites like Netflix, you know your user ID, the users are gonna log in to your system, and then you can collect a long history of users, of your users, what they were watching, what they were clicking on, you have a long history of them. What I'm gonna be talking about today is a short session-based data where perhaps the users don't log in to your website. This could be that you have a small sportswear website, or perhaps you are going on Expedia and then you are not logging in and you're looking for a hotel room. While you're interacting with the website, you're gonna be clicking on some items. You're gonna be clicking on this hotel and then the other hotel and then the other hotel. And this is gonna give you a short history or give the people behind this sportswear company some a short history of the user. And the question is, uh, you want to recommend to the user the next item. You want to recommend to them a particular type of a shoe or a particular type of a hotel room. There are these methods, competing methods, factor models, where you know your user ID, you know your item ID, and then you're gonna create an interaction matrix between the two. These ones we're gonna cover next in the future. There are some neighborhood methods where you look at your items and the items in this uh, short session that the user was clicking on, and then you are gonna recommend to the user a similar item. You are gonna do some K nearest neighbor and then say, this item is the closest to what the user was clicking on. But if you look at this short session-based data, you can think of them as a sequence of integers. I clicked on this item, and then the item ID, it has an ID, perhaps it was the 256 item that you're serving on your website, and then you're gonna have one hot encoder for it. So in the end of the day, it's a sequence of integers. And then your task is next integer prediction or predict the ID of the next item. And therefore you can use recurrent neural networks, GRUs, LSTMs, perhaps transformers. A quick recap of recurrent neural networks, you have a history, you are gonna be updating some of the history using new information. The new information is the new item that the user clicked on. This is an integer or one hot encoded. And then you are gonna reset some portion of your hidden unit. So reset gate, update gate. There is no forget gate for GRUs. The forget is one minus the update. What is the input when it comes to session-based recommender systems? This is the actual state of the session. I'm gonna tell you what that is. The output is very simple. You want to recommend an item to the user and that item has an index and then you are putting the probability distribution on a list of items that you can predict or you can recommend to the user. And then you're gonna recommend perhaps the top five according to the top five highest probability ones. What is the state of the session, which is your input? These are the actual items that the user was clicking on at time t in its sequence in the session. The user clicked on an item. You know the ID of that item. You turn it into a one of n encoding. So n is the number of items. And then uh, you want to have an overall picture of what the user was doing. In addition to h, you're gonna have perhaps a weighted sum and perhaps you are weighing the most recent clicks or the most recent items in that sequence, a higher weight. So this is part of your feature engineering. For recommendation systems, you're gonna do some feature engineering. And then the output is you're putting a probability distribution on top of the list of items that you can recommend to the user. This is the architecture. The actual item goes in, which is a one of any coding. In addition to this weighted sum, you embed them. This is the embedding layer, which is simply multiplying that one hot encoded by a matrix. 
you're going to have your GRU layers. There is a feed forward layer at the top, and then you're going to predict the score of that item. The question is, uh, how are we going to do mini batching here? The sessions are all different, and we know that GPUs like to process data in mini batches. But then if each sequence has its own length, then you're in trouble. The GPUs like to process things of the same size, and they want to do them in batches. Basically, they like to process tensors or matrices. This is going to be a list of sessions. How can you batch this? Let's see. You have I11. You put it here, I12, I13. And then your job is to predict I12, I13, and I14. You are predicting the next item in that session. Then you take the second session. You put it here. You have two of them. You're going to predict this guy. The last session it was the longest. You have no problem there. Then you go to session four. You take that and then you put it here. And then your task is predict I41. We can think of these sessions as different users or a user in a different day interacting with your website. And the elements of those sessions are the clicks or the items. And then this is how you're going to mini batch. This is mini batch one. This is mini batch two mini batch three, everything has the same dimension. Things are vectorized, or you can put them in a matrix, and then you can feed them all at once to your GPUs. And you are keeping your GPUs busy all the time. The question is, what happens when suddenly you go from one session to another session? You need to keep track of that, and then reset the hidden state of your neural network. You need to set it to zero or set it to some learnable parameter. That's the only catch. When it comes to loss function evaluation metric, I'm going to be covering them next session. I think I'm going to stop here. For those of who have questions, I'll be around.